flashbangs and three smokes. This must be some kind of tactical nuke coming on in here. They'll drop out the smoke early. That's to obscure vision so they can push up towards this ramp position. But those nades, I'm not quite sure where we're going to see those go down. I'm waiting for him. And Fallen might oh. be as well. He's he's ready to go, though. He's facing this too open. He's got support from Short and to his side. So first put a call. Fallen does get taken down. It's Nexter and Jax with huge success. Short's now open and KNG is isolated. I like this, though. If he baits on sandbags, he could do damage. He chooses to fight. Unusual. Down to one HP and not a single frag to show for this pistol. And look at G2. Clean as you like. Not a single body drop. Looking to change it was Taco. Not to be. And we're off to the races for G2. Now, just to set a couple of... Uh, expectations for the viewers at home. G2 are the clear favorites here, right? This is the international debut for MIBR with TRK on the roster. And the reason that I can say that is because of the situation we all find ourselves in. MIBR have only been able to play their 38 maps so far in North America. And it's been a mixed bag. They've won 18 games. They've lost 18 games. There was two games in there that were a draw. And things with this team, look, they haven't bounced in many years. So we need to see a new look. How long have they been in Europe, if you don't mind? You roughly guess. Uh, I, would, I would say coming on probably two weeks. Okay, so they've had a little practice time, but it ain't a great deal. No, certainly. It should be, an, it should be enough to see quite a clear change out of them, but something that I want to make very prevalent uh, for the viewers at home is the double AWP reliance out of MIBR. That's a great opening right there with the scouts. So this one might get dicey. We'll bring it up when we have a chance. Yeah, let's hold on to that for now because you know the power of the second round force buys. Losing the pistol is not a death sentence anymore. A deagle, a scout, oh, and another oh, tag. Wow. This is what it's all about. He softens them up and those deagles can finish him off. That might be the rifle out of Kenny's hands. He's, he's keeping hold of it for now. All of them stacking up here, but he's committed to it. And Fallen's still large and in charge, seeming unscathed from that first round. A little bit of a back and forth that he simply didn't come out with. And uh, hopefully, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I like the moonwalk. I like the shuffle. I don't like to see it in Counter-Strike. Blind, but, okay, so G2, they were able to get away with that uh, force by round that we watched before. We only got a little bit of it. And now they'll be going up against the Eco quickly towards A, they Scarpa. Yeah, it looks like Taco and Fur held on to their Kevlar vests. So let's see if they can do their Kevlar best to do something in round three. Lauren hated that. But she doesn't hate <laughs> Counter-Strike. And unfortunately, see there's a lot more of that to come. Vest, see my vest, see my real gorilla. Just, uh, d that's the Simpsons. The, beast? No, the Simpsons. the uh, Simpsons with... Be our guest, though. That was like yeah, it's it's the cover. Wow, we've got covers of covers of covers. Mr. Yeah. Burns is singing that one. Mr. Burns. What a, what a time. Were you more Simpsons or uh, Futurama? I, I I loved both. A bit I, of both. My parents thought the Simpsons was the devil's work at one point, but oh. glad we got over that hurdle. Hunter <laughs> has got over Fallen though. He was softened up by Kenny's Molly and a 20 extra damage on the Mac 10. We gets an extra 600 bucks in his back pocket, bringing that into the next. This should be open and shut. Are we still scared about how? somewhat French teams approach these rounds. I mean, back in the day, it was a, uh, a, ter a terrifying prospect of can they keep it clean? Will they do crazy buys constantly? Has, has that error changed? Definitely so with this G2. Uh, yeah, we're, was, we're not worried about that anymore. Perfect. Tied, what a time. That was tied to a different French player uh, who's currently playing for someone else. Uh, Mr. Shocks. Yeah. And Wherever happy. He goes. happy. I mean, I've, I've been casting happy That's in another true. game. So That's true. the economy still sta scares me out there. Don't worry. Uh, I think I'm going dies here. Oh. Uh, I'm just low as well. This could be a bit of damage. I mean, I, I'd be, I think Taco would be foolish not to go for this. He's got oh, yeah. smoke. You can make them sweat, maybe pull some rifles away. Hunter so low if he could... Oh, that duel on Kenny's impossible, though. He has the smoke. I mean, what's his plan here? No kit. Time ticking. Oh, I'm sitting close. He knows he's going to have to work for it. Nice little tag. Eagle, he's though. doing work. It's just he needs this one. If he gets the big boy banger, then, then game on, but... Oh, nice work from Hunter. Just kind of playing off the back of Kenny's contact and just swinging out on it. Nice to see. Uh, not as clean as you'd love, but I mean, you've got 7.9 on Amanek already. All right, well, as we look to get into the first gun round right here, let's see what hold they're going for. Fur, he is the mid defender on the CT side, or at least that was the case before the player break. So things that could have changed. We're in a bit of a black box right now and what to expect with a lot of these teams. You're going to have Taco as the solo defender over towards the B site and Fallen. Well, he has the AWP, so if he has a good spawn, potentially going for a pick over towards that A ramp might be on the cards. So he'll have KNG and TRK in tow. Oh, give it to me, Fallen. Let's see some of that aggressive orping straight down the line of sight. Does have a gap, misses his opportunity, and now he's going to get caught or not. Jax sent to an early grave and an early advantage now for MIBR. First into the first buy getting away with murder, just double dipping on that one, but KNG gets played in and Fallen's been so oh. proactive. That's confidence and that's teamwork and you like to see it. And the T side, the French boys, mostly, uh, are kind of hitting the brakes here. There's, how, much, how can you work out from this? The, the damage from the utility, yes, they can play up short, but 
it, it feels everything's just covered off so well. Yeah, you're really in a tight spot now. Bomb loose as well. Behind sandbags, crossfire established. Nothing Hunter and Amanet can do to get out of this tight spot. And Molotov does force them back. But look at this. It's such a grouping. Three of them in close mm. proximity. Well, remember the magic number. Three kills here. If G2 can find three scalps, that's all we're looking for in a round like this. They're in no rush. 49 seconds to just do as much economical damage. Of course, the win on the horizon, but not going to be easy. Taco on the flank. We're locking them down. They will continue to commit. Hunter positioning himself in a prime position for at least one. But as that smoke fades, Fallen, he's trained on that. And that's another for Fallen. Three in the round. Beautiful confidence. I've loved Fallen this round. The first two were magical now. Amanek, any damage, I guess, is, is a silver lining, but it's not much of one. Fallen's feeling it. Playing around the side, KNG on the swing. Lovely little back and forth between those two that round. All right, so if we're looking at the money right here for G2 going into what potentially could be the second gun round, there's enough for Amanek to buy. Kenny could get an AWP, and then the rest of the individuals could be upgrading into some pistols, maybe some P250s with a, a bit of Kevlar and some nades. Or we might see them go for a bit more of a conservative approach. So this was the opening from Fallen here to kick things off. Getting a little bit overwhelmed, but able to find that. All he had was the AWP and a flash to his name. So a big opening here for the in-game leader, and he is the He's man to watch. Mid. He's already feeling himself. After that first round, three kills, quick moves. He's already taken full initiative. Decided to battle for middle with KNG. Likely could be manipulating this into some sort of flank if... Anything is given to them. The flash is presence, and actually Fallen re reveals his position. That flashbang caused him to fire a shot. He's going to switch it up, though. Not being static, being proactive, finding another place to be, and keeping the T side having to keep, yeah, work it out. Precisely. That's what they're trying to do. Look at this buy, chat. It's it's rough around the edges for the T's. Yeah, it's a bit janky, but the plan early. Just wait out the utility. Make sure that the CTs aren't able to get away with murder. Hold them at bay. But because they're not poking and prodding early, they haven't actually had any threats on the map other than the flash towards middle. You can see the CTs are holding onto a lot of utility, but they're also opting to get aggressive here. Fallen really pivoting around the map here. He could find another opening. Fallen's going to make another fan out of me. Fallen out of grace, fallen out of favor, but MIBR, the fact that they've taken the choice to venture to Europe out of the frying pan into the fire is an analogy that feels almost astute for this one. But a 5v5 all the same oh. spoon to change. That's Kenny gone. And the Orping Jewel, oh. he's gotten away scar free. I can't quite believe he's still alive after that one. That was one of the big names, right? That was the AWP now gone. Now it's down to the rifle. It does get at least filtered back to Nexus. So they still have it within hand, but Fallen's completed the mission. Early aggression towards mid, the switch up over towards here, and it's not over yet. You can see TRK, he wants a bit of it too. Molly oh, it does just hit him towards the smoke. So Hunter gets away with a couple more steps. The play towards the side comes in and Amanek. Oh, if that, sh if that shot on short came through, it's his game on. And suddenly this becomes deadly. Two of the players standing have the big guns, and maybe, wow. just oh. maybe, they don't need them. Nice from Jax. Just the Desert Eagle did not expect to see three Deagles turn into a 3v1 in favor of G2. He's in trouble. Great reactions from Taka. He's got another opportunity. It could have happened. My god. Whew. Nexa missed his shots. If Amanek had fallen, we could have had ourselves a 1v3 for the spicy Taco. Not to be. G2 continue to extend their lead. With an opening like that from Fall and that, that freebie to kick things off, there was probably no need for Watch the... Jax. Oh, here he comes. How aggressive he is. He's got 20 HP at this point. He gets another kill against an AWP, you Oosh. big boy. Kenny not happy with that one right there. Obviously not aware that they could have re-aggressed there on that uh, short position. But look, they won the round. They can get the AWP back in the hands. And they're actually rocking a double AWP setup here. Amanek has an AWP as well. So... Okay, I was going to say is. potentially miscommunication, but there's the opening. Fallen goes down. He won't get the opening in this gun round. KNG, though. Always excited to see this man on the AWP. A degree of flair. That caught many eyes, and there's another. Hunter gone. We're into the 4v4. Bombs loose. We've got a whole 90 seconds ahead of us, so there's absolutely no rush. Taking some mid-control here. Amanek, I pressed with Jax belong, uh, rather alongside him. Furs in a very powerful headshot position here. How'd you break this? These have got a touch of utility still to make a play with. They can make something out of it. Kenny looking like he wants to set something in motion. Ooh, that's for above fur. That's not going to flush him out. He's got a flash. Likely going to throw a flash in pair with Jax's swing. Back to CT. Wow, just what you called, Lauren. Lovely jubbly, not for Jax. It's KNG. From A to middle, he's managed to find two frags. These mobile authors are just beautiful. You saw him fall in for the first couple, and KNG's just picked up the crown and popped it on the head. I mean, he's loving it this round. Kenny was like, well, I've dealt with one of them. Now I've got two of these versatile authors everywhere to find. It's, it's not an easy task, but T's are certainly not out of it yet. 
still trying to find that avenue of approach, and maybe this is it, but Tarko sitting pretty dead towards this spot. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting duel. I don't see a world where Fur's going to get both of them. As that smoke fades, he's got to worry about CP flank, and he has actually managed to get away with it. Amanek down, looking set for a MIBR second round. Just as I say that, Taco confirms it. Ne Nexa only allowed the one. And Kenny, with such low HP and such a prized possession as the AWP, this is round. This will be number two for MIBR. You could see right there what I'm talking about with those double orbs. KNG and Fallen both op operating with them over towards the A bomb site, right? That's very, very uh, hard to predict. I was watching it back on Skybox here, and Hunter is just kind of drifting out of a smoke, not expecting another player to be picking that aggressively. Just killed the orb. Yeah, and yeah. that right there is very confronting. If both of them are playing in the same position, look, it's unorthodox. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend that this is what you see from most teams. But this could be MIBR's flair. This could be what they want to make work. Remember the Immortals that we had in the final of the PGL Major back in the day? You had Henny and KNG. Very dynamic, aggressive combat orpers. Well, Fallen, he was the original gangster in that regard. So <laughs> if they can make it work with this team, like I said, costly, it could be the right move. Up ramp, very fast and a hard shot to hit for KNG. But there is more where that came from. He's going to be making the call. DRK needed to do more. A FAMAS has fallen into enemy hands. Now the Tech 9 still looking pretty ferocious, apparently, at this point. But you do have that awkward Kenny, but they do need that bomb to be going down. Fur hindering Nexus progress is going to make this trickier. Kind of tucked in on short for now. The T's still have to wait out the barrage of utility that's sitting so comfortably. It looks like the bomb might go down here, and it's planned for short. This isn't a bad round. This might bring those CTs in towards G2's world. I have watched two Vertigos so far since the break, and both times the CT sides have flubbed their bomb site mollies. How are people safely planting on default when you've mollied default twice? It's just... I've seen it happen in the 100 Thieves Genji. It's happening again here. Those lineups are not too oh. difficult. It's oh, you're a brave boy. Kenny with some smooth moves, but the but round is not one. Tickling the bomb and a tag into Taco's shoulder blades. Hunter just desperately trying to force them off. There's no one there. He's even got his knife out. He's so convinced. Now Fallen's going for it again. Stabbing, nice. stabbing. One more will do. He's off the bomb at least. Hunter looking to clutch and he's done it. Simply by just brandishing his knife in front of the Brazilian in-game leader. And it pulls home another for G2. I guess you do bring a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, hang on a second. Hunter's changing the meta. I I'm surprised that the MIBR with three to four smokes, which is what they had when that retake or at least the bomb had gone down, it didn't have a in their arsenal smokes that they could set up for themselves. They only dropped one on the bomb. They had a lot more than this. They could have actually cottoned off or cleared out deeper parts of the map and they had AWP, so that would have played into their favor. Dropping it on the bomb, you're less versatile. You can't be spamming through the smoke. It makes life a lot more difficult. And the fact that they've stolen this one away, well, now there's a real chance to punish and the MAC-10s are out. Hunter's even whipped out a Zeus. I swear, I'm going to make the exact sound effect. Never mind. KNG's just eliminated him. Straight out of the gate. Little wall bang on the sandbag swing. And into the site comes Jax. Brazen. Look how bold this is. They know they're still right. Oh. up. They're taking fight after fight and the trades are so effective. They're barely getting anything back for the CTs. This is their site all day long. They've been pushed around, picked apart by those orbs and they just went, all right, well, let's quicken the pace. Yeah, and it works wonderfully. Taco is going to have a chance here. The next up, very quick on the trigger. We'll upgrade the Galil to an M4. And we're off to the f races. I mean, six to two. MIBR, this is the CT side, and they have got peanuts to work with. We thought we were about to see that swing in momentum, Chad, and, well, it's just come crumbling down. Yeah, it's definitely gone back the other way. You can see how costly these AWPs are. The economy right now for MIBR, it's around 2.5k for every individual. And on this replay, look at the orbs getting swarmed. What can KNG do? He kills Jax, but how many more frags can you deliver? You hit one shot, somebody steps out, the trade's all Always going to be there. Is there a safe assumption then that that's going to be a G2 read? Like these orbs are banging us on A, let's just go fast with flashes? Yeah, because the thing is, let's say that they hit one opening. It's highly unlikely that both hit those openings and then you're going to be able to snowball and get on top yeah. of them. You can get up very, very quickly and an option for MIBR there, potentially cheat more players over. But now that it's in the back of their mind that they have to deal with this fast A ramp aggression, they have to think of how they want to deal with this. Do we bring more rifles? Do we try and spam through smokes? Do we use more utility? Do we play more passive? And now this opens the door for G2 to go back to more of a standard style of approach on Vertigo. I love those all like mental gymnastics and, and you know... It, Fear of the nade. Lauren, exactly. I remember you teaching that to me about 10 years ago in SMG lessons. <laughs> Alex, look up. Now, when you throw this nade, if you throw it twice, you don't have to throw it a third time because yeah. they will still not be rushing. I, I think I said it's just the, the bar gets set, the precedent gets set as to what to not necessarily expect, but you, you have to respond in kind to it because you don't know 
th that third time it's not coming, right? So it's it's an interesting one, and I love the pace change from G2, not feeling out of it, and the confidence in trading is wonderful, right? It's that that full faith in we're just going to bang it in here. Yeah, I might get picked up, but you, I know my buddies will trade me back in and get the round ideally. So at the moment, this is uh, as clean as we're going to get, it seems. Love the Hunter's taking full control of short, so regardless of what his team choose to do, they can work up scaffolding and work towards ramp, all eyes in the same direction. So powerful from Hunter, he cannot die. He just has to act as a, a ward, if you will. It's basically a free bomb site here with this B stack coming in fallen as the, uh, I guess, canary in the coal mine. He'll sp try and get the call out to the rest of the in those CT and elevated positions with the utility on the G2 side. And realistically, they don't need to throw a lot. Very basic flash, smoke, and away we go. Yeah, I mean, as soon as uh, Fallen reveals himself, never mind! <laughs> that lands right in the top pocket of his MIBR jersey. Just notice the different approach. If you didn't uh, join us last night, 100 Thieves versus Genji on Vertigo, they were going for deeper smokes. That actually smoke into the elevator room and use the Molotovs towards the boost boxes to get site control. What we're seeing out of G2 is the two smokes to cover off the back of the site, but what that will allow is the CTs to set up the Molotovs you were talking about earlier, Alex, and also spam through with the rifles and potentially get some cheeky damage or kills. So the method that 100 Thieves and Gen.G were going for, it's much cleaner, there's less risk, but it also takes a bit more time. And if you lose players in transition or you get bottlenecked over towards short or scaffolding, it can be more difficult. Look, they don't want to go back towards T-Spawn. They should be able to stay safe towards the top ledge, but, oh, they're actually going to exit through CT. They so try and shoot them on the ledge, but they're not. No nice. dramas for G2 here. There are actually two players go down from MIBR yeah. in that forklift room. So things oh, couldn't be looking better with a 7-2 start on MIBR's map pick here. Oh, and they didn't lose a single player, so they've got oodles of cash in the bank should this next round go awry. It's going to be a bit of a wall for MRBR to get breakthrough now. Uh, CT side of Vertigo, it's time to start uh, turning it on. Let's have a little look at how this one did transpire. We're talking about those smokes. This is a perfect example of what Chad's talking about. Little wall, Molotov or nade towards the boost boxes and get that bomb down. Still, back into the weapons. I'm, I'm wondering what it looks like with all rifles. We've seen what those aggressive orbs can do and they look great, but obviously non-sustainable. So I want to see if the rifles can translate in. It looks like they're going to go back in. It's a stylistic approach and it's a choice. And they've stuck with it. Hunter is going to feel this out. The spidey senses are tingling that I don't really want to go towards ramp here, but an instant response, oh. Alex. They're not holding back for a this second. This is hot. Look how fast. There's still 90 seconds in the round. They're in CT spawn, Lauren. This is so cheeky. KNG's going to start getting paranoid. They are aware of it. You can see first stance on the bomb box. Taco on Jenny's as well, and here comes the flank now up from B stairs. Oh, it's just poetic. They can't worry about all of this at the same time. He's screwed. Rock hard place, and that's the conversion. That was so beautiful to watch play out. The switch up in the most perfect way. What a great what read from G2. I, I'm so impressed with that. I love the switch up towards middle. And now, of course, Fallen, TRK, and KNG. What, you've got no options here. Save. I mean, that's the only option, really, that's got any sort of merit. And you know, may not have the option. It may be taken from them. There's another and another. Oh, next are just collecting and shattering any sort of hopes of an MIBR success in the next. Wow. I'm, I'm blown away by that. I, I love seeing, again, I coming back to Counter-Strike from other games, seeing that mental read, that approach, knowing the other team's economy, the style, I, I by, by hook or by crook, it worked. Well, what we were talking about was that uh, reliance over towards, or at least uh, ability to not stop the A ramp play. We're actually gonna bring up Skybox here so we can check it out yet again. We're going for a bit of a top down view. I'm even uh, gonna free ball this one a little bit. So we're gonna play it out. You can see here over towards A, Fallen TRK, and KNG are all aggressive. Meanwhile, towards middle, we've got the Molotov coming over. We've got the smokes as well. And look at this, they already have mid control. Another smoke's gonna drop and still over towards A, three players, nobody caretaking middle. And that's just free territory straight away. So great calling here from G2. They are really punishing this MIBR roster early. God, Difficult I timeout. I love it. I've, I've, I've missed this. It, it looks so simple, but you come from other games you haven't seen in a while, and you see emotion. You see the mental game. It's just beautiful. It, it does feel like G2 just knew exactly what MIBR wanted. They'd been showing, and I guess people show you who they are, right? But to be able to run that against them so early, so easy, so clean, yeah. stunner. And what I liked as well about that was that was a demonstration of exactly why I think the new mid in Vertigo holds more merit than before. Yeah. You know, the fact that, yes, it will not be occupied every round, but it has to be something that you as a defense or an attack have to address in one way or another. Like, if, if you don't check it, you're going to be shot in the back three rounds in a row and you're going to be 
mad. Well, it's great that they, you know, obviously the door was there in one of the early stages, then they took the door away and it was just a massive corridor and yeah. now they've added this uh, construction. Yeah, like exactly. That. And, and that's added a lot more flexibility to this. Now, it will be just a pistol round coming out here from MIBR and it actually could be in classic G2 fashion if they were to lose this one. But they have, uh, they've been boot camping together. They've been out there, I think, in the Alps somewhere at one of their facilities getting in some training. And look, Malik is a coach of this team. I love talking to him. He uh, looks at the big picture. He's really about the mental side of things, making sure the players are all on the same page. And mental has been a big deal for G2 since, uh, I guess, the formation of this international roster, I guess we can call it. They've had some uh, flubs. Alex, we've been there for a few of them live. Yeah. And I still find it so funny that some people still scoff when, when mental is brought into the competitive gaming world. Outside of putting in the reps with your mouse and keyboard, what else is there that separates you from everyone else? I mean, the, the point is that this game is so refined. Everyone everyone can frag. Every every player now, the skill level is so elevated. You know, to be to be a, a above that is, is a few and far between. Yeah. We have them, right? They're out there, but I mean, they are the exception to the rule, so you're right. The difference maker can be that mental approach, and you see teams, it snaps, it breaks sometimes. So, yeah, fortitude is everything, and I, I, I do love the concept of the double peak on short. That, Gets me a little excited, but it does seem as though it's being handled. The threat's quelled, and I don't see much more coming from it. I love it again. I like this. I like safety in these rounds. Yeah, they grouped up. They knew that there was going to be a stack somewhere. No funny business. Good trades from Nexa. And the jiggle from TRK, he just got the perfect amount of info. He knew there was a second short before he had to start asking that question himself. Oh, it's rough out there for TRK, though, isn't it? One kill to his name. The new boy on the block, him and Taco, they are statistically for this team the bottom two players. Uh, when we're looking towards the top, it is Fallen and uh, K and G. I think they both have the same rating. It's like a 1.08 as per mm. HLTV.org. And then it's Fur coming in that third slot. So that puts a lot of uh, importance on these Orpers to be hitting the shots. A lot of money to buy the AWPs. And once again, back over towards A with a lot of aggression. Hunter up already. I mean, TRK has been in Pro CS for four years. That's something to remember. You know, the, the people alongside him were lifting trophies four years ago. He got his first contract there. Oh. Nice shot, Kenny. Stopping the aggression from Taco, and that's just going to be a wide open B site should they choose to follow through. I say that with bated breath. Fur has filled the gap. KNG's up to some funny business. Does he stick here? If he gets the timing right, it's one of the dankest of flanks. Awesome. You could hear a pin drop here. So tense. And Hunter's still here. He's not left his post. He is on duty, waiting for the reaggress. And he's right to feel as though it's not the first time we've seen Fallen do this, and it may not be the last, but he might have a little bit of a head ring after this if he does peek it. Molly goes in. It's going to encourage the peek, but does he? Oh, Hunter, you are so damn good. You just read him like a book. And it just feels like G2 are a step ahead in every occasion. The patience from Hunter, I mean... Respect to the OBS as well for taking off X-Ray. That really does help you appreciate just how much of a standoff that was. Staring at nothing for so long, and then he gets everything. Two round winning kills from Hunter. And that's going to put double digits on the board for G2 so damn early into this series. This is MIBR's map pick, I want to remind everybody. Now, Inferno is coming up next, and that's a map that MIBR do tend to lean into. Not a great map for them, but a map that they seem to be comfortable picking. Next up, decapitates KNG, who had a full set of grenades right there. He didn't even get to throw a single one of them. And that all came off Taco going aggressive towards B, and I understand why. It's because G2 have just been doing that A strategy time and time again. He wanted to take some free info, wanted to take some free map control, and potentially start clamping down so they didn't have to worry about all of the corridors of the map here. But it didn't work. And now, well, this gets to the point of the game where max loss bonus is in play. We can see the 3,400 coming in for everybody on the MIBR side. They have to start force buying. You can't walk away from this half with only two rounds. Can, I, can we just like talk about how frustrating it must be to lose in not, I, I don't say a similar fashion because that kind of defeats how well G2 have adjusted it. Same site hits over and over and over and over. Yeah, you had a little bit of success early on. Try it again on the orbs. I mean, if I was, if I was in fallen shoes and I know short, like, at the start of every round I'm saying I'll go short, I'll go scaff. If every time I'm saying that, I know that Hunter is around that corner and every time I'm unwilling to win that duel or take that fight, credit to Hunter. He, he, he knows what he's doing. They know what he's doing. And that's a good start again. Aggression on ramp met by lead. 4v5 and that could change very quickly. TRK, speculative shots through the smoke. Very vulnerable to that AWP and Kenny will clip him. I like the deep smokes. So it gives him a little bit of play on it. Why not, why not try and make something of it? But... I, th I think that's the scary thing, right? They've got to. It's it's two rounds, as Chad said. It's it's not going to be enough to really take you through here. You know, unforced and forced errors come into play. They're trying to make something out of this, but Kenny seems all too aware. 
And Hunter's on the case. Hunter living up to that name. Just goes straight in. The man's seen a little bit of blood in the water and he's after it. And well, the three remainders for the CTs are kind of here, there and everywhere. Nexa looks as though he's got these two numbers. Yeah, I love this position from Nexa. I mean, you've got so much to worry about. The CT 50-50, you've got your bottom showing and Taco did fur to trade. The only M4 in play. And a 2v3, certainly mathematically not looking unlikely, but everything else pointing towards a G2 11th. Just fur. Bomb down, he's coming in from ramp and they know it, so smokes. Everything left in the G2 arsenal will be thrown his way, and yeah, I think he realizes there's nothing he's going to be able to get away with there. We'll upgrade to the AK, take himself a nice little kit. Just, just help me, Chad. Okay. Um, how do you stop that presence? I'm normally the one asking for help, Lauren. Um, <laughs> so... Because like, it, it just seems so easy for G2, right? Yeah, but like in, in a round like that, or in the other rounds... Let's say a normal gun round. In a normal gun round, okay. In a normal gun round, the problem that you're seeing right here is the MIBR guys are going for double orbs to stop it. They're not doing it through utility and rifles and stalling them out, right? What we were talking about yesterday with the Gen G 100 Thieves game was the utility that was being dumped to slow them down and then the reinitiation. You chip them down, you slow well, them the down. The second wave of utility, exactly. right? Exactly. It feels like an all-in for MIBR. They either win or lose... That's very quick. Yeah. I just clicked and finger gunned Lauren, and I obviously. I'm glad you clarified the second yeah. part. You're wondering of that why first. I was clicking. Yeah. And there was uh, a finger gun attached to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Well, we don't have the double orps. We have a orp. So, I, I, as said, I'd love to see that switch up, but I don't know if MIBR have that, oh, if, if they're aware of that. Bats. And we are going to be seeing something a little bit different, Alex. Yeah, yikes. Jack's had a good go. taco has been holding that angle religiously, so finally he gets something for it, but I'm afraid it's not a kill. 26. Points of health remaining for Jax. Back into middle, takes the jewel with the orb. Oh, go on. He's looking for the HT. Fallen wise to his antics, does back away and just chips him down to another. Oh, three. no. Fallen can't rotate through. If he tries to come through CT to back it up, oh, never mind. Hunter's dropped on off, so looks like they're thinking better of this within the mid round. But look at all the control that they have. They have B lobby, they've got mid. They can go for a split here. Taiko's in trouble. Mid control. 60 seconds, Fallen's paranoid in CT. Still construction held nicely. Utility-wise, they've still got three smokes. They can go anywhere they want, and into far is the option. A lovely double. Looking good for MRBR's third here, but next up the swing. Back into the site. Another remaining. Fur on Gen. Fallen rotating in and low. One more kill for that plant, and that's what he needed. Next has got it. Fallen clawing something back. They know there's still trouble up foot. They're still paranoid about middle. They still don't know the final picture that's being painted by G2. But now they're going to find out. Kenny spots the arm and it's just ripped away from Fallen. And now the 2v2 post plant. Both of the CTs going back in. That's going to be a molly. They know where it is. Kenny is on oh. his train. Jax finds one. Jax finds them both. Kenny not even called in in the situation. And I've got to say, it looks first seemed more aware that was a possibility. But even then, they couldn't stop it. What more now, can you do? Look, I, I I really want to talk about Nexus frags right now because uh, we don't really bring the scoreboard up a whole lot, right? So it's hard to keep track. But Nexa has 17 kills. Oof. The next closest on his team has 13. And to uh, pull a round like that out of your back pocket, that's basically secured this map here. As, uh, you can see the fans at home. Not too much cheering on the MIBR yes. side of things so Not far. On the yeah, in the chairs. <laughs> Arms in seats. Fingers on the keys of Twitter.com. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold up, there's some life. That's what we like to see. Where did they get those picks? I kind of missed that, that's my bad. Uh, one towards middle. Okay. And one towards... I guess ramp. Well, that lower level makes it even more yeah. complicated. Yeah. Over, over towards four. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm working out the mini-map again. This you is, and me both, sister. Well, the Vlads have been very kind now. They put, they put X's up for us, Lauren. We appreciate Yeah, that. it's very nice of them. They keep adding new things. Yeah, you don't know what you want until you have it, it seems. Mm. Lots of great things here from uh, the ESL creative development team. Three versus three for our final round of the first half of our second game of our second day. And Kenny oh, wants no. to get this day done fast and through the flames. Oh my gosh, that's a nasty way to be executed. He had no options. Last round, last player, Taco. G2 are just living in their heads rent free. Everything they're trying to do is just like, oh, you're gonna sit in the corner. Cool. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna scope in and and and, and find you. Oh, you're, you're gonna try and peek short off the back of that? No, no, we've we've seen that too. Uh, Taco, let's see if you can find something they don't expect. That's gonna be a little bit of a a bell ringer for Kenny. And now the one v two. It's possible. Taco's got a touchy util to work with. It ain't much, but it's something. Did he spot him crossing short? I think he did. 
Oh, the chance was far. I'm machine. I've got Pansy and Chad with me. Lauren, any hopes here for the G2, excuse me, the MIBR boys? It looks you like know what? GT's hopes for there. G2, great. <laughs> Fantastic, actually, Alex. Uh, it's looking brilliant. Um, but no, for the other side, it's it's a brutal one. But I've, look, I've seen crazier comebacks. It's just it, it, it's it's something that I don't entertain for a long time. No, we'll keep, we'll keep our uh, lips zipped. And ooh, OK, contact on A. Oh. Jack's in a spot of bother. It's fallen to draw first blood onto Amanek. Kenny's shaken as well. I love the aggression from Fur. Very capable to be at the front line of this assault. Expecting the bomb to be planted seconds from now. Taco providing that. And now comes the jewels. It's bullets into the head of Fur to start the ball rolling back in G2's direction. Yeah, Kenny looking a little low. Might be worth trying to trade in on him, but Hunter just kind of following footsteps in front. Flash comes in. He's going to swing on it. Oh, are you kidding me? This guy's so precise. Such precision. And now KNG playing off the back of short, takes the fight, loses it, and they're still so good with so little HP, and it's on form. Nothing you can do. That's a quick defuse. That is 14 to 2. They let them have the site. They retake it, and thank you very much, Hunter. Uh, you haven't got to see much of him. I'll tell you now, I've, I've never seen a player with crosshair placement like his. Mm. Like, he is this one bullet body shot madman he will just avoid all shoulders and bellies it's all about the head and his crosshair placement is sublime yeah he's uh kind of in the footsteps of his cousin uh nico yeah. so in case you guys aren't too familiar with that nico from phase these guys are related they're both uh headshot machines now that scream's gone i guess someone headshot new machine. needs the title i still get to cast him it's all right <laughs> sure, yeah <laughs> and he's gone to play with British players. It's it's a travesty. British FPS players? Yeah, it's, it's a weird Don't one. Lie. Speaking of weird one, this economy is still catching me out every time I see it. But the mid play, Jax gets that one, but do they expect Kenny? No one oh. expects Kenny in the corner. But now in a 3v3, it's up in the air. Bomb, that's bomb. Bomb now loose. Next is going to be happy with that. And Taco has unfortunately lost the other two prongs of this 3v3. He's prongless. And Taco does look rather helpless. Just next uh, towards the CT. Bombs in mid, as we discussed. And he'll give it a good go. Full health. Solid rifle. Now my neck low, but up against the ropes. And I'm already starting to think about map two. I think we all are. Yeah. I'm looking at my Inferno notes right now. And well, next we'll close that one out. Mm. All right. Okay. Look. Look. Look, everybody, I know I know the scoreline, it's not great, it's not encouraging, it's MIBR's international debut, they're getting dumpstered right now on their map choice. But this is only game one, there's still an opportunity, there's some jitters, we've got TRK, he's you know, only got three kills to his name, this is his kind of first foray into, into the big leagues. And we didn't really know what to expect from MIBR, right? They've been in troubles basically back since 2017 when they last uh, won their last big trophy. Here they will just go for another force buy. It's a pretty, a pretty bleak forecast of Vertigo. It would be quick if we could just get going onto that next map and maybe reset. Certainly. Well, it looks like Jax wants to get us there. ASAP, Sivu play. He's not going to get it today. Kenny, on to TRK. Wow, short poem by Alex Machine Richardson, age 26. Even a little bit of French in there, really quite the uh, global icon. National treasure. It's a 2v2, though, and I'm no golden boy. It's 15. And soon to be 16, only a half health on Taco, fallen in the very same fate. You believe in fate, Lauren? Yes. Oh, gosh, we've got a conversation to have. <laughs> well, <laughs> back into the Counter-Strike. Hunter onto B. Bombs loose. This is very curious. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Trading places. Yeah, they're, they're basically in CT angles, but they're the ones that have to plant the bomb. Now, TRK lost that in middle. It feels like a round ago. You can see it there. And uh, with Hunter on B, they've got a just perfectly geared CT on each side. All right. Taco, fallen, fallen just, just on that bomb. Just trying to get it back. But now where, Lauren? It's a great question, Chad. And you know what? If I was in uh, it might be oh, your they shoes. don't know. I don't think, yeah, exactly. I think they've hit a bit of a brick wall here. And this is a horrible scenario, isn't it? Because by the time you get to the site, you're going to try and get the bomb down. And then... You get no say in okay. how it... Devil's Advocate here, chiming oh. in. It's a UMP. Everyone loves Devil's Advocate, They've Alex. Chosen... Yeah, they do, don't they? They've chosen <laughs> A, and that is probably the better choice of the two. Hunter was so primed for a double kill with his M4. Now Amanek mid-range with a UMP, a fallen plant safe. We're cooking with something. It's not gas, but it is flammable. Hello, Amanek. Good attempt. Not good enough. All on to Hunter then. I believe in the 1v2. He's got a flash, he's got a smoke, he's got a molly. No kit, though, but... 
Look at the other two, falling a little low. Tarko's there, but they're, they're going to sweat this one out. They're playing this keen as you can, and oh, is it around the world we go? It is. I like that from Tarko, but falling first, put a call, goes down. Right, Hunt. Does he read this? He's got a kit now. Right. Oh, he's got the molly going. He knows the only place Tarko's going to be. And my word, this guy is so smart. That is fantastic. 16 to 2 is the final score, map 1.